It is imperative that the Trail of Tears Association ensure that the record of what was done to the First Nations of the Southeastern United States remains as relevant a story today as it was 180 years ago. An amazing story that the people, the ancestors of the Eastern Band purposefully enacted and saw their way all the way through all the suffering that it took to remain here. The Cherokee wanted to create, they wanted to communicate with themselves, but most importantly, they wanted to communicate with the world. So the ancestral Cherokee people are cosmopolitan people. Um, they had deep and wide social networks. One disillusioned soldier wrote that he was paid to commit a crime, to defend a fraudulent treaty with, in his words, the vilest machinations man or demon could invent. And if you understand the Trail of Tears, and if you don't forget the Trail of Tears, when you go on to study just what happened in the 19th century after the Cherokee people got to their new homelands, picked themselves back up, and rebuilt a great society and a great democracy and a government built on the rule of law. We don't do this to shame or blame. We do it because it's an opportunity for us to say to the world, our ancestors persevered. They had tenacity and resilience. They refused to be victims. They rebuilt the Cherokee Nation. So I think that y'all should give yourselves a round of applause for all that you've accomplished in the last 25 years. You didn't sign up to be warriors in this battle. Your efforts to speak plainly about the Trail of Tears to preserve the history helps push back on this nonsense. So we are bringing back the history course for the Cherokee people, by the Cherokee people, so that this generation of Cherokees coming up will know their own history. Shio, welcome. So I am here on behalf of Principal Chief Richard Sneed, who was not able to be here today. He was called away um, on business. So uh, while I am happy to be here on behalf of the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, and we support uh, the Trail of Tears Association and the work that they are doing, the remarks that I'm going to give this afternoon um, are from Chief Sneed. My dearest friends at the Trail of Tears Association, I would like to first apologize for being unable to be with you in person. Given my own personal connection to the association through my participation in the 2014 Remember the Removal Ride, I was extremely disappointed when my executive responsibilities required me to be in Washington State during your visit to the Cherokee homelands. I count it a joy and a privilege to be able to spend time with the Board of Directors and the Trail of Tears Association members. My purpose in being absent relates closely to the mission and work that the Association is engaged in year in and year out. As you are aware, the mission of the Trail of Tears Association is rooted in four important directives or principles identification, preservation, protection, and awareness. These four principles are pillars in the organization's mission. They take precedent over any activity that might present itself to the association. For if any of these guiding principles should fall by the wayside, the value and purpose of the association would become diluted. Further, it cannot be overstated how valuable and important the work of the association is to the accurate record of history. I say this because we now, we now find ourselves in an age 
where truth seems to have become subjective. A time when even recorded history may be called into question or even denied. An extreme example would be those people who deny mass genocides, such as the Holocaust or Stalin's gulags. Such denials would be deemed foolishness or madness not so long ago. However, as recently as 2014, US News and World Report conducted a survey regarding anti-Semitism in nearly 100 countries. Amongst those surveyed, half of the respondents had no knowledge of the Holocaust. More troubling, of the half that had prior knowledge to the, that the Holocaust occurred, a third of this group simply did not believe the Holocaust happened. To this group, the Holocaust is a lie, a myth, a hoax, a conspiracy by those with a political or ideological agenda. It is imperative that the Trail of Tears Association ensure that the record of what was done to the First Nations of the Southeastern United States remains as relevant a story today as it was 180 years ago. Equally as important that the story being told about those events is accurate and supported with evidence in the form of historic documentation. The mission of the association is a high calling. It is a public trust. I do not believe it is hyperbolic to make these statements, for I am convinced that if things in the United States continue down the path that they are on, then the day will come when the oppression and persecution of our ancestors will also be called into question. Whether or not the truth will prevail in that hour will depend largely upon the work that the association has done and continues to do. You may be asking, how does the Trail of Tears Association mission relate to what I'm doing in Washington State? Well, I have spent a great deal of time and energy defending the tribal identity and sovereignty of the Eastern Band and tribal sovereignty in general. Throughout the history of the Eastern Band, as well as many other tribes who were removed from the Southeast, there have been groups of individuals who have claimed to be historic tribes. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians has a long history of defending our sovereignty and protecting our identity from being misappropriated by those groups claiming to be a historic tribe. We have literally spent millions of dollars over the past few decades fighting these groups who seek to rewrite history and insert themselves into the historic narrative as a persecuted tribe in order to bolster their ability to seek federal recognition. Historically, these groups would be disqualified from federal recognition by the Office of Federal Acknowledgement. The OFA was created by Congress in 1978 to review claims of these groups seeking federal recognition. Previously, only an act of Congress could do so. Historic federally recognized tribes through organizations such as the National Congress of American Indians petitioned the Congress to create a formal review process so that recognition would not become politicized. Further, historic tribes recognized that individual members of Congress did not have the requisite skills necessary to properly review a group's claim. Therefore, the Office of Federal Acknowledgement was created. Creating the OFA did not, however, nullify Congress's plenary authority over Indian country, nor did it take away its authority to recognize a group through an act of Congress. One would imagine that in 2022, with all the technology at our disposal and an established process for groups to petition for recognition, that the elected officials of the United States Congress would defer to the OFA process that their predecessors created. A process that removes the burden of proof from Congress while simultaneously protecting the tribal identity and culture of established tribal nations. Nothing could be further from the truth. Year in and year out, members of Congress, along with the groups whom they have become the champions for, 
seek to rewrite history and add to the historic record groups of individuals who in some cases cannot demonstrate any native ancestry at all. This occurs every time a member of Congress sponsors a bill to federally recognize a group while bypassing the all-important vetting process that the OFA process provides. For the last two years, the Eastern Band has been sounding the alarm across Indian country, utilizing the same four pillars as the Trail of Tears Association. Identification, preservation, protection, and awareness. We are identifying groups who falsely claim to be a tribe. We are preserving the integrity of the federal recognition, recognition process by demanding that Congress stop selling our identity for votes and instead defer to the OFA process. We are protecting our culture from misappropriation by these groups claiming to be tribes, and we are raising awareness amongst tribal nations that our collective identity is being stolen and our sovereignty slowly eroded away. While these words are being shared with you, I, along with one member of our tribal council, are currently in Tulalip, Washington, attending the Affiliated Tribes of Northwest Washington Annual Conference. We are here to continue the work of this shared mission of identifying, preserving, protecting, and raising awareness. In response to our work, over 80 federally recognized tribes have joined the fight, and we hope to add many more. Now is the time for action. Historical evidence is being ignored and the memories and sacrifices of our ancestors defamed and disrespected. Let us not grow weary in our mission. Let us not forsake the high calling. May we never betray the public trust. Our ancestors, our posterity, and truth each deserve our unwavering commitment. For all that you do, I thank you and I salute you. Kindest regards, Richard G. Sneed, Principal Chief, Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Shkee.